You, yes you, are probably more gullible than you realize. You have probably absorbed opinions from others a little non-critically and just taking them for granted. Uh, and those opinions, some of them, are going to be wrong and you just haven't ever been exposed to the correct answer. Uh, which leads me saying you're probably more gullible than you realize because there's a lot to know out there and there's a lot to be wrong about. Now, obviously, people do that to save time. For example, if someone says, hey, uh, you should or you should not watch Acolyte from Star Wars. It's lesbian space switches, man. How can you go wrong? Apparently, you can go wrong. I wouldn't know. I haven't watched it because I have other things to spend my time on. And for a long time, uh, that was me in regards to Ringworld by Larry Niven. I first got exposed to this in like my engineering courses where they're using it as an example for, uh, because, well... We are going to build space stations eventually, where to simulate gravity, you uh, spin up a ring and you stand on the inside and, you know, hey, don't you know, gravity and uh, constant acceleration are indistinguishable, except they kind of are, or Alice Forces. Uh, and it was, like, used as the example. It's, it's very famous because it inspired Halo. Uh, like, the, the rings are largely inspired by Larry Niven's ring world, which in turn was based on Dyson spheres and other variants thereof, which, if you don't know what a Dyson sphere is, you take a star, you build a shell around it at the radius of Earth's orbit, and you stand on the inside. How do you stand there when there's no gravity? I don't know. Figure it out. But the point there is you get a lot of living space that has, like, constant solar flux. Or you're, all, you're lit up. You're going to have the correct, uh, you know, energy capture from the star. Hey, maybe they're out there, and we just don't know because all the light's being captured. You look at the night sky, you only see things that are lit up. There could be dark stars out there with entire alien civilizations with millions of times Earth's surface area available for them to live on. There could be quadrillions of them living on this Dyson sphere if they somehow fix the artificial gravity problem. Now, there are some problems with that. There's a lot of uh, oddities about like, well, how does the star stay in the middle? How do you get the gravity? How do you get the atmosphere? How do you yada, 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 yada? And it's kind of just this uh, benchmark for civilizational growth of how much energy from your local star are you able to harness? What can you do with the energy, et cetera, et cetera. This isn't fully a video on that. A ring world is a simplification where uh, you just build a ring that's, you know, a few million miles wide or so, and you spin it so you can, you can simulate gravity and stand on the inside. You can build walls and capture atmosphere because it's under gravity. Uh, you still have a day-night problem. You have actually a lot of problems. You still have to somehow tether the station to the star. How are you going to build it? Where are you going to get the materials? How's it not going to fall apart? How's a, what's going to happen when the meteor hits it? Uh, and there's like a thousand reasons to not build it, or rather engineering hurdles in the way of it working. And I was always exposed to Ringworld as like this example of sci-fi back in the day doing goofy stuff that doesn't work. And people have reiterated that to me over the years. And that's why it took me a long, long time to actually try Ringworld. Because I was under the impression it was just like dumb engineering and I wouldn't like it because I know engineering. I tried it for, like, genre research purposes and found out I had basically been lied to the entire time because, like, half the book is exploring the issues with a ring world. That's It's literally the content of the book. These people telling me, oh, it's so stupid, it has all these problems. We're probably getting the problems from the book. Oh, what if a meteor hits it? Guess what? A meteor hit the ring world in the book. That's why they know why it doesn't work. Oh, how do you get day and night? Because the, you have sun squares floating, you know, rotating counterclockwise around it. It's the book itself is exploring these issues and then the downstream effects and then the how people react to them and how pe if you react wrong to them, you can get bigger issues and you can get into a total societal collapse because, hey, one thing went wrong and then everyone lost communication and everyone said, ah, someone else will fix it. I'm going to use my resources to stave off suffering here and live a good life. Someone else will come fix my problems. And then nobody did and you get the ring world in this savage feral state of, you know, basically medieval barbarism. And that's the content of the book. You you explore the ring world in book one of the series. It's set over a series I won't be reading. 
Uh, and it's these interstellar explorers from Earth and other planets going to check out this weird oddity and learn what it is, where it came from, what the implications are, are they a threat, yada, 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 yada. All the content you could want out of a science fiction novel like that. That's the material. The target demo is engineering nerds because it ex it introduces issues and ex it explores the consequences of those issues. It explores the consequences of reacting to those issues. And so on and so on. I enjoyed the book. Not enough to read book two. There's a lot of other things to watch, which brings me back to my first point about, hey, you know, if someone gives you an opinion, sometimes you got to just take it without investigating because there are so many things to do to spend your time on, like picking up one of my books. Uh, I have said before, which always surprises somebody that Twilight is really not that bad of a book. If you are an author, you should probably, even remotely in those genres, you should probably read Twilight because if you don't understand how Twilight got as popular as it did, you're never going to make it. It's extremely obvious why that was successful with the target audience. In Twilight's case, it was young girls that want to have set, you know, romantic power fantasies, essentially, about centuries-old men falling in love with them. Uh, th these are the kinds of things I learn when I go investigating books to learn the genre, though. Uh, you're going to hear bad opinions, even from people like me. You, for Your taste in books is not my taste in books. I'm just giving my opinion here as I speak into a microphone. Uh, and brings back, you're probably more gullible than you realize because you probably just haven't been exposed to the actual answer. For example, if someone tells you Acolyte by Star Wars is about lesbian space witches, you might go, how can you screw that up? I haven't tried that out. I have better things to spend my time on. Uh, it's it, That sounds like a winning formula, in my opinion. How can you screw that up? Apparently by having a massive skill issue in the writer's room in Hollywood right now. Skill issue. Uh, but, hey, there's lots of books out there. I, if you are an engineering nerd, you might like Ringworld by Larry Niven. You, If you are, you probably have already read it before clicking on this book. There's more meat to this 1970s weird sci-fi novel than you might expect, but it's also kind of not what... Uh, mo this book would never be published today, I don't think. It's not nearly character-driven enough, even though huge portions of it are about Larry Wu and, the, you know, the puppeteer and the Kajin and so on. And this weird idea that, hey, what if we started a eugenics program to breed humans for luck? What does that mean? What are the consequences? How would you measure that? Uh, and ideas like that, that, uh, you know what, a lot of sci-fi doesn't explore that very well. And so I, I found it quite refreshing to read that. And uh, when I pick books, I, I hope to get those kinds of experiences. So I, when I do things like pick books for the monthly book club, which you can join the Discord for that if you wanted to uh, hop on the monthly live streams with me. I pick books like uh, Canterbury Tales by Chaucer. Ancient book. A lot of people can't get into it. There's spelling issues. There's, you know, it's it's practically, Victor you know, medieval English at times. But here you can pick up a spelling translation where it just prints the words the way that we would be able to read them. You, they'll have less issues, apparently. I don't actually know if this copy is one of those. Uh, but it... Surely there is merit to this book if it's been around for so many centuries, and I'm looking to find that, and that's what I look for in books. If if something like Dungeon Carla Carl is more your speed, where you just want to laugh your ass off at a uh, degenerate AI getting extremely horny over weird fetishes, I enjoy Dungeon Carla Carl too. I just listened to book four of that, and I'll be continuing that series for sure. But uh, keeping this short here you're catching this today i'll probably be live later tonight you should join me check me out there if it's not live hopefully i'm still doing live streams regularly because i gotta sell books because i'm a struggling author on that front till then uh ring world by larry niven uh, if engineering is your thing it's a recommendation with like an asterisk uh otherwise maybe steer away from it <laughs>